thank you for introducing me as uh, Helmut's slowest student. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I think uh, I came at the same time as Russ. Was anybody here that was here in 73? Oh, good. Okay. All right, Charlie. You're the earliest guy. The oldest guy. I was, let's see, Deepak Dang was 14, and I was 15, which puts us right dead set, and Hiro Fuyama was 16. So right in the middle of Helen's career, he deviated from performance design long enough to dabble in some very conceptual, qualitative stuff. And I appreciate that, Helen, because that was the only way I would have ever gotten through. I came through here and got my master's degree in 1974, starting in 74. And uh, we did everything by hand back then. Although I did have a calculator that helped me always get it in the because I couldn't <coughs> add two numbers in my head and get the right answer. Uh, but anyway, we, we did a lot of things by hand. When I got out, um, I kept doing it by hand. And, and Ron, with all due respect, I'm still doing it by hand. <laughs> anyway, when I got my PhD in 1991, I went into a postdoctorate program Crawling for Luth and Associates. In my career, I have been, I like to think of myself as uh, Helmut's uh, alter ego. I'm the design engineer at Helmut's uh, research engineer. Uh, and so everything that's good about Helmut, think about the opposite. And that's what I am. <laughs> and, and in terms of patience, uh, if you've ever seen Helmut and I uh, talking over a design problem at Helmut's or Helmut's dining room table, glasses of scotch or bourbon in her hand. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like either one of us are very patient. <laughs> anyway, uh, we had a firm together, uh, along with Exponent, Failure Analysis, uh, partnership firm, Crawling for Lutheran Associates, for three years in the 90s, 1995 until 1998. And in that period of time, uh, we designed uh, an extraordinary number of buildings extraordinary variety of buildings, an extraordinary uh, variety of natural environments. And I'm just here to show you some pictures of those buildings, and I hope that you will be as impressed as I am with the variety of buildings that we did, as probably from Luth and Associates. Uh, there's a, in the uh, collage there, all of those are probably from Luth and Associates buildings. I'm going to try and go through. All right. This is right on the coast, as a matter of fact. On the other side of this is the bay. 
Now, all three of the projects we just looked at went through Hurricane Katrina. Uh, well, the Lake, uh, Lake Charles went through uh, Rita, and the other two went through Katrina. This is the 14-story uh, tower. It took the eastern eye wall for 12 hours, 150 mile an hour winds. Uh, the storm surge came up to 12 feet up on the building. This is what the inside of the building looked like after the storm surge. Uh, this is our link at the top of that building. There was absolutely no deflection, no cracking, no problems at all with the structure. So, Helmet is also a, uh, a hurricane. This is uh, the next interesting one we did was the rebuild of the Hilton sign in Las Vegas. You've probably seen this if you've been to Las Vegas. The uh, original sign was uh, constructed in 94, something like that, fell down before they had actually turned it over. And the requirements of Hilton were that we rebuild around the existing sign to minimize the amount of downtime. Uh, the distinguishing characteristic of this one is we had a, a Brian McDonald from Exponent working for us at the time. We automated the, the analysis. We, we drew it in the AutoCAD, automated the according to that information to SAP, did the analysis, and SAP came back and all the design in Excel and, and then drew from Excel ran the CAD program for all the members, put all the forces on the set. Uh, of course, this kicked off a whole bunch of signs, so all of these signs here are probably for signs. Uh, MGM, we didn't do the original sign, but there was a rotating cube up here that had a, that had a nasty fatigue problem, and uh, we told MGM that we could fix it, <clears throat> but if they believed us, they were stupid, and uh, in reality, it would break again because it was fatigue and there's no way to fix it. So if you go to if you go to Las Vegas right now, uh, you will find that there's a, a static display. The cube no longer rotates, and you can thank Crawford for that because uh, MGM took our advice and tore it down. Uh, the eagle up here that was kind of a cute one. That's up in uh, up in Michigan, and uh, the sign guys had done this eagle, and they they put it up and the wings fell off. <laughs> and the eagle is it, a it's a uh, it's a fiberglass eagle with uh, a steel substructure, and the eagle is a sacred uh, symbol to the tribe. So this is a really good way to get yourself fired if you're a sign company. So they came to us and said, "Well, without changing anything, can you fix it?" So that is the only composite steel fiberglass structure that uh, Crawford has ever done, and apparently it's doing really well. We haven't heard anything. This one's an interesting one. There it is in context on the tower. You wouldn't believe it, but that's 300 feet above the ground, the sign. And this sign weighs uh, 30 tons and was put up in one piece uh, with the world's biggest crane. And uh, on the windiest day, as it turns out, it wasn't supposed to be windy, but they started early in the morning. By the time they got it up to the 300 foot level, if the wind was blowing pretty hard, trying like hell to get it tied off. I was mowing my lawn that day, and I got a call, and the guy said, well, we got the sign up there, and all the embeds are in the wrong place. Tell us what to do. And I said, put it back down. He said, no way. What's plan B? Anyway, this, I, I got to go up there a couple days. I gave him some things to do, and I got to ride a, a, a lift up to the top of that thing, a little basket, and we got up to the top. And the uh, cable was strung behind that sign. We pulled this basket right up to about here. That was a connection that had to be fixed. And the only way to get to it was he pulled the basket up at about a 45 degree angle, said, climb up on the, uh, on the rail, and you'll be able to see the connection from there. Um, it, it was an interesting experience. Uh, that's what happens when you're a structural engineer, which is why all you guys are teaching us aside from a few. Anyway, that's, that's what we engineers do. Uh, the Harley Davidson, the M&M sign, anyway, that's, 